Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, Pretty in Pink. Today we're going to be making a baby sweater. So we are going to first start off with a slip knot. We are using a medium weight for yarn with a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. We are going to chain 21 and then we are going to do one row of single crochets. Here's how we're looking after the row of 21. We're now going to do our single crochets. Now of course to do a single crochet, it's quite simple. You're going to go into the first chain from the hook. You're going to put your hook inside. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through once, yarn over one more time, and pull through the two loops that you see remaining. Perfect! Let's do it one more time. We're going to go into our next chain, yarn over once. We're going to pull through once, yarn over, and then pull through the last two. And we're going to just do that for the whole first row. Now that we're done with our row of single crochets, we're going to chain two and we're actually going to do a row of double crochets now. To do a double crochet, you're actually going to skip two chains and I think I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So you have your chain that's on the hook, ignore that, then you're going to skip the following two chains, you're going to go into the third chain that I'm pointing at right now. How we're going to do a double crochet is we are going to yarn over, go through that third chain, one, two, and three, there we go, into that third chain just waiting oh my goodness okay then we're gonna yarn over again and we're gonna pull through then we're gonna yarn over pull through two yarn over one last time pull through the final two now just remember when we're crocheting you go through both loops so I'm gonna show you a zoom in right now see those little V's you're going underneath those V's when you're doing your crochets for the next crochets you're just gonna go into the very next chain and you're just gonna repeat the steps and you're gonna do that for the rest of the row and for the following 14 ro rows. So you're gonna have a total of 17 rows for this back panel. The first row is gonna be single crochet, you're then gonna have 15 rows of double crochets and a final row of single crochets, okay? So here I'm just letting you watch me do that last double crochet row, which is our 15th uh, double crochet row as well as our final row which is our 17th row in total which will be our single crochet so here is our 15th double crochet row which ends up being our 16th row in total and now I'm going to chain one and do a single crochet row which ends up being our 17th and final row for the whole thing Once I'm done with the back panel, all I did was bind off and just don't pay attention to this bind off because it wasn't good. I ended up redoing it off camera. You'll see a better version later. Anyway, now it's time to do the two front panels. Your two front panels are gonna have the same amount of rows as your back panel, obviously, because they need to be the same height. Your first row will be a single crochet, then you'll have 15 rows of double crochets, then you'll have a final row of single crochets. When determining the width of the front panels, what I ended up doing was I made each panel be half the length of the back panel. So since I had 21 chains for the back panel, I made each of the front panels be 11 chains because obviously 10 and a half chains can't be done. But that was a mistake, do less than that do less than that do like seven or eight chains or maybe even six chains because what happens is once you add the ribbing a lot of the space gets taken up and what ended up happening to me is by the end by the time i was done with the sweater there was no neck for the baby there was no room for the baby's neck so please don't make the same mistakes that i made all right so now we're done with our front panel <laughs> i'm just showing you my last the 15th double crochet row and then i'm going to show you my final single crochet row at the top and what you're gonna end up doing is just repeating that for the second front panel as well.
and now this is a proper bind off. All right, you put the tail inside, create a second loop so that way you can make a knot at the very top. That way it's more secure. So now we've got our front and back panels, but I just want to reiterate, please make sure that you do not make the same mistake that I made. Please make sure that you are doing less chains for the width of the front panels. Do not make the same mistake I made. Okay. This sweater, as well as the dress and the booties that I ended up making for the baby, I was just winging it. I was learning as I go, trial and error. I wasn't following a pattern or anything, just winging it. So there's a lot of mistakes. So I just want you guys to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately, this is all the yarn that I had left. I can't find the exact same yarn. I went to the store and this is the closest I could find and it looks nothing like it. So we're just gonna have to work with this. Holy crap, I was not prepared for this. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, time to make the sleeves. So what we're going to do for the sleeves is we are actually just going to chain 15 and then we're not going to do any um, starting or finishing rows of single crochets. We're just going to go straight into the double crochet because we do not have enough yarn. So we're just going to double crochet for eight rows. Fun fact, the reason I can't find this yarn anymore, or at least I couldn't at my local store, is because this is the yarn my father gave me when I was seven years old and I first started knitting. And I just had never made anything with it until now. So, there you go. Seven years old, that's a long time. So yeah, it's understandable if you can't find the yarn again. But I do think it's super cute and sweet that I finally have uh, a purpose for this yarn and it's for a baby, Aww. Now I'm just letting you see my final row. You know, I might have done six. I don't remember the row, how many rows I did. It might be six, actually, not eight. Yeah, I think it's six. Yeah, it is actually six rows. Sorry for the misinformation. It's six rows, sweetheart. You're gonna do it twice, so you have two sleeves now. <laughs> and this is how much of that yarn we have left. We really used our money's worth. You know, I don't even know the name or brand of this yarn. That's crazy. Anyway, you've got your back panel. You've got your front panels, and you've got your sleeves. Look at them. They're so cute and poofy, which means there's only one thing left to do. Lining. It's time to create some ribbing for this cute little sweater. The ribbing's gonna be in white because white and pink is such a vibe. Uh, it took me a while to get the yarn out, but once I did, all we had to do was make a slip knot, and this one, for real, I do not remember the number. I don't remember how much I chained. Right now I'm just um, doing the ribbing for the sleeves and I'm just showing you how I'm kind of tightening the sleeve so that I make the correct size ribbing because I want to have like kind of a puffy looking sleeve so I do want the ribbing to be smaller than the sleeve so it gives you that puffy look. I don't know how much I chained, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. It's, I'm so sorry. But you are gonna make a first row of single crochets, then you're gonna do two rows of ribbing. And right here, I'm showing you how to do ribbing. So right now, I'm showing you those Vs. Those are the crochet Vs. The, and so normally, when you crochet, you go underneath those Vs. But as I'm showing you right now, whenever you're ribbing, you're actually gonna go in the back loop. All right, so you're doing everything as normal, but in the back loop. So first row is gonna be single crochet, two rows of ribbing, and in those back loops, you're gonna be doing single crochets in those back loops to create single crochet ribbing, all right? So we all remember how to do our single crochets. We go in that loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and pull through two, all right? In that loop, and then we're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and pull through two. You're just gonna do that for the two rows of ribbing. And it just acts like regular crochet. So when you get to the end of that ribbing, chain one flip and do it again. This sweater will have ribbing on the sleeves, the bottom edge, and the part where the buttons are, which is what I'm showing you right now. So what you're seeing here is I've already done a row of single crochet, and I'm now on my first row of ribbing. For the parts that include the button, and the opposite side where the buttons are going to stay, you will only be doing one row of single crochet and one row of ribbing. For the other parts, you'll be doing one row of single crochet and two rows of ribbing. In any case, what you saw me just doing was I chained three, skipped a stitch, then I single stitched in that following stitch, and then I just continued ribbing like usual. So now I'm gonna slow this down and I'm gonna show it to you up close and personal. 
So the way we start off is we're first ribbing. So we're doing a single crochet into that back stitch. So we know we go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, pull through two. We're gonna go in, we're gonna yarn over, pull through, gonna yarn over again, pull through two. And here you're just seeing me check uh, how much of a gap I need between each button. So I noticed that I did need maybe just one more stitch. So in between each button, you're gonna see that I have three stitches of ribbing in between each button. So you're gonna see me add one more ribbing stitch. And now, here's the part where the button's gonna go. You're gonna see me chain three. One, two, three. Then I'm going to skip one stitch. So you see that? I'm not going into that stitch, I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna go into that stitch right there. When I go into that stitch, I am not going to be ribbing that stitch, I will be single crocheting that stitch, which means I'm not going in the back and I'm going through like normal, underneath the two lines like normal. And we just single crochet like usual. And now, from here on out, we can do our ribbing. And that's how I made the openings for the buttons. So this is how your lining should look for the button section. For all the sections that don't have buttons, you are going to do a row of single crochets and two rows of ribbing, but for this particular button section where the button goes through and where the buttons sit, where they're sewn on, you are going to do a row of single crochets and then one row of ribbing. Here you see me steam blocking. Normally you steam block after the piece is done, but my ends were curling up a bit too much, so I just wanted to steam block them here, and I did an additional steam blocking after the full piece was done as well. So when I steam block, I like to put some cloth uh, over the fabric to protect it so it doesn't melt since it is acrylic, and then while it's still hot, I put something heavy on top, in this case textbooks, to keep them nice and squished and flat while I am uh, steam blocking the rest of them. So that's just what you're going to see me do for the rest of these pieces. Now that our pieces are nice and flat, we're actually gonna lay them in a way that we want them to be set up, and we are going to sew them with a yarn needle. Um, what you're seeing right now is the pretty sides are not facing me. What's facing me, what's facing us right now, are the ugly sides, okay? That way all the ugly stitches will be inside the garment, not on the outside of the garment. So as you saw, I left a nice little opening uh, before I started sewing because that's where the sleeves are going to be attached. What you're seeing me do right now is just a couple over stitches because I think over stitches are quite strong but I think they use up more thread than a running stitch. So I use the over stitch to kind of secure my stitches when I first start sewing and then what you're going to see me do now is now I'm going to be doing a running stitch for the rest of the garment. And you will see that whenever I also need to add any curves to the garment, which you'll see later, I also do a running stitch. So the yarn we're using right now is the yarn we have left over from the yarn my father gave me when I was seven. We're gonna try to use that as much as possible, but unfortunately we do have to eventually use that pink yarn, and yes, it does stand out, unfortunately. So we've sewn the sides of our garment and now I would like to add a little curvature because I do want it to kind of look poofy and princessy kind of. 
I don't know how to explain it, but you know how poofy princess things are. So I wanted to be kind of poofy on the edges of the sleeves and on the edge of the body. So I am going to be doing, uh, first I'm gonna do a little over stitch just to have it nice and secure. Then I'm gonna do a running stitch right across. Just do it across as if you're trying to create a triangle. And when you end up flipping the garment inside out, it'll end up being curved on that side. So where I'm sewing right now is the top portion of the garment, so the shoulders. I want it to be curved around the shoulders. And as you can see, when I fold it inside out, nice and curved. Love that. So, unfortunately, we did have to end up using the pink, but that, you know, we finished with the one my father gave me. It lasted a really long time. We only had to use the pink for the sleeves. Um, but anyway, uh, you can see for the sleeves, I'm actually crocheting it instead of sewing it. I don't know. I think it just comes out a bit more to my liking, a bit more poofy when I do it that way. So all you have to do is hold the garment pieces together. You see, ugh, why am I struggling? <laughs> hold the garment pieces together, put the hook through both pieces. Okay, good. You're gonna yarn, ugh, I'm still struggling. Okay, now we're gonna yarn over and just pull through all of them. So it's like a slip stitch, or is it, I don't know if it's like a slip stitch or if it straight up just is a slip stitch. Anyway, you're gonna go through, oh my gosh. I don't know why I was struggling so hard. I guess I was going through a really tiny stitch. Yarn over and pull through all of it. And you're just gonna keep doing that until you've completely covered all the stitches you would like. All right, so our garment's finally coming together, but as you can see, I want some curves on the edges of the sleeves. So I am going to do, like I showed you before, I'm going to do a quick over stitch just to have it nice and secure oh no I didn't do an over stitch this time so this one I just went straight into the running stitch sorry disregard what I just said I just went straight into the running stitch right across uh, for this moment in order to make the sleeve be curved So now that that's done, once we flip our sweater inside out, ba -ba, that's how it'll look on the outside. We are not done. Obviously, we need to attach our lining, but look, it actually looks like a sweater. Aww. And some of you might be like, oh, the neck doesn't look so bad. Uh, just wait till I add the lining, then we'll talk. All right, so I was really tired. I was running out of time and patience. Um, so this is me the day of when I needed to have the clothes ready. This is me um, just slip stitching everything together so it's the same method as before so you just put it into both pieces of fabric yarn over pull through all of them and this is what i do to attach the lining or uh, the ribbing for all the sections for the sleeves for the bottom portion and for the areas um with the buttons sorry if that wasn't in depth enough i was recording three projects at the same time so not a lot of footage anyway glamour shots this sweater really would have been so stinking cute if it wasn't for the neck thing. And it's not like it doesn't have a neck at all, it's just way too tiny for a baby. Also, the button said handmade with love, as well as a label on it. This was so rushed, somebody remind me never to procrastinate again. But anyway, if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, please give me a like and subscribe. Bye!